Hello and welcome for people who have dialed in. Uh, this is Brennan Burkhart. We're going to give it another minute or two uh, just for other attendees to join. So uh, please be patient. And thank you uh, for waiting. And for people who have recently joined, uh, we're going to give it just one more minute here, and uh, then we'll kick things off. Thank you. Okay, uh, hello and welcome. My name is Brennan Burkhart. I am the global head of Liquid Hub Salesforce practice. I'm joined today by Kenny McCall, chief architect of the Salesforce practice. Hello. I'd like to welcome you and thank you for joining us today for the first in a series of webinars on our Salesforce solution for the asset management industry. As we take you through today's webinar, we have muted the lines. Uh, so if you do have any questions, please post them in the questions panel and we will be sure to leave time to answer them towards the end of the webinar today. Uh, thank you again for joining and uh, here we go. Uh, so I'd like to take a minute to introduce Liquid Hub, which may be an unfamiliar name to some of you. Uh, Liquid Hub is a consulting firm of about 3,500 employees with an exclusive focus on digital customer engagement. What that means is that all of the services we provide are geared toward helping you better connect with the services, better connect with and service the people that matter most to you, your clients. As Salesforce is the world's leading customer engagement platform, it's obviously a very, very large part of that story. And so today we're gonna to be focusing on the Salesforce practice and more specifically, how our customers in the asset management industry are using the Salesforce platform to build deeper, more engaging relationships with their customers and how they're using it to provide tailored but highly efficient client service. Through the next hour, we'll introduce our accelerator for asset management and provide a demo from the perspective of both retail and institutional users, as well as that of an institutional client. Some of you joining today may not be too familiar with the Salesforce platform, and many of you may already be using some parts of the platform. So through our demo, we'll be highlighting the use of Sales Cloud and Service Cloud functionality, as well as the use of Wave, Pardot, and Community Cloud. And all of this will be demoed using Salesforce's new Lightning Experience user interface. Just a quick overview of our practice. We are a gold partner with delivery resources in the US, the UK, and Asia. We have a nearly exclusive focus on financial services and more specifically asset management. Kenny, myself, and the rest of our practice leadership have been working together implementing Salesforce for financial services clients since 2004. Because of that sharp focus, our practice brings a unique combination of platform expertise and industry knowledge. 
And over the years, we have packaged much of our industry experience into pre-built accelerators, which have been certified by Salesforce as part of its full force certification program, designating these solutions as representing industry best practices. Today, obviously, we're here to talk in detail about our solution for asset management. As I mentioned before, Liquid Hub is wholly organized to provide customer engagement, services, and solutions. Beyond our Salesforce practice, Liquid Hub has a suite of complementary capabilities we bring together where it makes sense for our clients. This can include examples such as us tapping into our user experience studio for persona definition and customer journey mapping, or bringing in experts from our design studio for highly interactive customer communities, or even tapping into our BI experts in the analytics practice for advanced analytics cloud dashboards. The ability to bring together all of these different skills allows us to deliver more comprehensive customer engagement solutions than traditional Salesforce partners. Now I want to give you a better understanding of our Salesforce accelerators. All of our years of experience basically uh, have come together in these accelerators. Our accelerators are solutions built on top of the Salesforce platform. Uh, they include industry specific capabilities that we've developed over hundreds of implementations. And these accelerators eliminate the time it takes to build the foundation, which means that you can focus more of your time and energy building out the features and integrations unique to your firm. These solutions accelerate requirement definition, design and development, while at the same time lowering project risk. At the end of the day, you get all the benefits of a turnkey solution, but the flexibility of a custom build. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Kenny for a deep dive into our solution for asset management. Take it away, Kenny. Thank you, Brennan. So as Brennan was saying, our accelerators give you all the benefits of an industry-specific turnkey CRM applications while also taking advantage of everything that the world's leading customer engagement platform, i.e. Salesforce, has to offer. We're here today to talk about our asset management accelerator, which is one of our official full force solutions, meaning that Salesforce has recognized it as representing the best practices of the industry. As you'll be seeing today, our solution lets you manage both your institutional and retail business together on one platform, something that's not easily done on any of the niche industry CRM applications. Let's take a look at what that means. What we're looking at here is a very simplified view of how clients are engaged within the industry. On the left-hand side, we have what I'll call institutional or direct, where the clients are investors, either institutions like private or public pension funds, or very rich individuals. On the right-hand side, we have retail or wholesale, where the clients we're selling to are actually intermediaries to the end investor. For example, selling mutual funds through a team of financial advisors at a firm like Morgan Stanley. The key point here is that although we're selling the same investment strategies, the same product, if you will, the approach to selling couldn't be more different. Institutional sales is about building deep relationships and providing high touch servicing, while retail sales is about scale, about using data to make sure your salespeople are talking to the right advisors about the right product at the right time. And with 400,000 financial advisors across the US, that's not as simple as it sounds. So what this has frequently led to is a siloed approach. Firms have often built out engagement systems for each of these channels separately. But as I said at the top of this slide, this is only a simplified view. The reality is that there are businesses that fall in between, like retirement or relationships that cross both businesses. And silos will hold you back when it's time to invest in customer engagement initiatives across all sales channels. And that's where Salesforce comes in. And who doesn't love a Venn diagram? So with the flexibility of the platform, you can have both businesses sitting together on Salesforce, but with each side having a completely optimized user experience. No need for any business to fall through the cracks. And not only that, the Salesforce platform is a lot more than what you might think of as CRM, and asset managers can take advantage of the full breadth of the platform. In our demo today, we're actually gonna to touch on a lot of these things. We're gonna to touch on sales, service, marketing, community, analytics, and apps. But enough slides, let's get into a demo. Uh, what we're gonna to cover today, uh, well, we're gonna show you Salesforce's new user interface, the new look and feel called Lightning Experience. Uh, if you've been using Salesforce for a while, this will be a bit different. It's an opportunity, we're gonna call out some of the cool things there. Uh, we're also gonna show you how you can seamlessly embed dashboards from Einstein Analytics, formerly known as uh, the analytics cloud or wave. Uh, you'll also see how you can build uh, client portals using Salesforce Community Cloud. Uh, we're also gonna touch on using Pardot to manage your email marketing and more. Um, what we don't have time for is a full end-to-end run-through of all of the features. We did a pretty in-depth demo in a previous webinar, 
Uh, you can see the URL right there for a recording of it. Uh, although we've added quite a few features since then, it's still worthwhile to check this out if you want to see some of the other parts that we're not showing today. So he, here are the five users that are going to represent the employees of our uh, make-believe asset management firm, Liquid Hub Asset Management. In the case of Victor, he's actually a client. We're going to start with the three on the left to show the retail business, and then we're going to jump over to Victor and Vanessa to show the institutional side. So to start the retail side, we're going to start with Kieran. Kieran's a national accounts manager at Liquid Hub Asset Management. His job is to manage the relationships with the major broker-dealer platforms and to make sure that our funds are available and recommended on as many advisor platforms as possible. So I'm going to switch over now to, to a browser where I am logged in as Kieran. Uh, this is, you know, when I've logged in, we get to the homepage. This is my cockpit where I see uh, what's most important to me. If I'm a national accounts manager, what I see will be different than what other users will see. If you've been using Salesforce for a while, this is definitely, you'll notice that we're on Lightning Experience, like I mentioned, the new user interface. Um, and as we go through the demo, I'll point out a couple of, couple of cool things with this. On my homepage, I can see a wave dashboard uh, showing sort of summarizing sales across all firms. I can see the pages that I've recently viewed. I can see my chatter feed. Um, I can see relevant news stories if I scroll down a little bit, and I can see more. We're going to touch on some of these features later and we'll get it a little bit deeper. One of my favorite features in Lightning Experience uh, is favorites, where you can store the pages that you go to frequently. Um, you can keep your favorite records in here, but also list views, reports, dashboards, all really, really useful. I'm going to use it to go to the LPL page as I have a quarterly review meeting coming up with them, and I want to check on how we're doing. So let me click there. So now we're looking at the page for LPL. As you can see, it has the key information I'm interested in right at the top of the page. Another great feature of Lightning Experience is that we get to organize the information on the page in a more intuitive way. So here you can see that we have sales, assets, uh, product availability without having to scroll all the way through the page and find where they are. This is really useful if you have a lot of information to show, which is usually the case in this industry. Before I go into my meeting with LPL, I want to check on our sales and assets. In the sales tab, we have another embedded wave dashboard from Einstein Analytics. I can easily click on the, falter, the filters here at the top uh, to dynamically look at the sales figures. I can uh, just so gross sales by clicking here, or I can click into a specific territory to kind of filter this down. Uh, we're big fans of Einstein Analytics. It's a breeze to embed it within the Salesforce user interface. Uh, let's all your users make kind of good, solid business decisions based on the insights. Uh, it's also available on all the mobile platforms. So it's a really, it's a, uh, I, we're just really excited about some of the stuff. And, and with, you know, we mentioned already that retail uh, asset management uses a lot of data. Uh, the analytics uh, is, is really amazing in terms of surfacing that. Um, Similarly, I've got an assets tab as well, so we can actually look at positions and assets. Um, there's another dashboard. I can drill in by territory or by product, and you'll see that the top offices and top contacts changes dynamically. This is, uh, and I can even bring this up on my iPad in the meeting, so when we want to get into specifics uh, with my quarterly review. Um, before I go into the meeting, I also want to brush up on where we are with getting our funds onto LPL's platforms and recommended lists. I can see from this chart that we have six funds that we're still working on getting approved. Um, embedding charts like this is much more flexible in Lightning Experience than it was in Salesforce Classic. I'm going to click into one of the platforms. I'm going to click into Model Wealth Portfolios platform at LPL. And here I can see the specifics of where we are for every product on this specific platform with color coding and another embedded chart to see everything at a glance. Let's go back to the LPL page. I'm feeling good about my meeting now. I'm up to speed on everything I need to know. I also know that I can pull up any of this information on my phone or iPad if I need to. Before I head off for my meeting, I take a quick look at the news, which is not showing right now. Um, well, this happened in the Apple keynote yesterday as well, so it happens to the best of us. There we go. 
working. Um, so take a quick look at the news. Uh, if you remember the legendary Red Hot News app, you'll love this news feature in Lightning Experience. It shows you relevant news stories to, your, uh, uh, to the records that you're looking at and that you care about. Um, this one here, you know, it's also my responsibility to kind of make sure that the, the people out in the field selling through LPL advisors are aware of, you know, things going on with LPL. So I decide to post this to Chatter. So I just click here on that post. I'm going to say something to look out for in your meetings. I'm going to tag the wholesalers group. This is how easy it is to send it to a group. And this will make sure that all the salespeople uh, will see this in their Chatter feed, even if they don't follow the LPL firm. So we're just touching on Chatter here. It's a really rich collaboration tool that sits right within the platform. I'm gonna show you a couple of other use cases later. You'll see it. I think it's, a, it's actually really exciting how you can use it to kind of uh, get really focused collaboration and communication within the firm. So that's me ready for my meeting. I log out and I, and I leave to go. So I'm gonna close this window. And next, we're gonna talk about Rashida. So Rashida is an internal wholesaler. Her job is to, you know, to do sales from her desk, but also to support her external, which is Bradley. Bradley has an in-person meeting with Ronald Kruger of LPL coming up, and she wants to make sure that he's fully prepared. So let's now go in and log in as Rashida. I'm now logged in as Rashida. You'll see we're on her homepage now. As you log in, I can see that Kieran posted something uh, that could be relevant to Bradley's meeting. Uh, Bradley will see it in his feed as well, but I want to really make sure he sees it. So I'm just going to add a comment here and I'm going to at mention Bradley. So you get the feel for this. It's very similar to using something like Facebook. And now when I do this, Bradley will actually get a push notification on his phone and he'll know to check it out before he goes into his meeting. Another great new feature in Lightning Experience, I can see all the recently visited contacts right from the contacts tab. So as I said, Bradley's going to a meeting with Ronald Kruger. I can jump straight here. So as with the, the sort of firm page we looked at for LPL, we have just key information for Ronald right at the top of the page. So I can, I can kind of just see at a glance how we're doing with Ronald. Uh, another nice improvement in Lightning Experience is how the activities lay out. So tasks, meetings, call logs, et cetera, are all laid out in this graphical timeline. I can also close out this task with just one click. That's really nice. Um, so that's much easier to get into the, the process of putting tasks out there when they're this easy to close out. Um, I want to dig in a, a little bit on our sales with Ronald before I send Bradley some meeting prep notes. So I click on the sales tab. We have another embedded Einstein Analytics dashboard here. And it lets me see how sales and redemptions have been broken out by fund. It's good to see both sales and redemptions here so I can look at sort of overall patterns. But sometimes I know that Bradley just wants to see gross sales because that's how he gets paid. It's just a simple click here to filter it down to gross sales. Because it's a dashboard, it's dynamic. It's very easy. I can, if I was a little bit more corporate minded, I can look at the redemptions as well. Next, I want to generate a one-page tear sheet to share with Bradley so that he has really all the key information handy when he, when he goes into the meeting with Ronald. For this, we're going to use a great app exchange app called DrawLoop. So I click the tear sheet button. What this is doing, it's pulling information from Salesforce and formatting it into a nice one-page document that's easy to scan. We can generate Word, PowerPoint, Excel documents. But in this case, we're generating a, a print-friendly PDF. DrawLoop is great for this but you can also generate client-ready reports, contracts, a whole lot more. Uh, so here's what the generated document looks like. So there, you've got that nice formatted one-pager. It's print-friendly. He can also bring it up in mobile, as we'll show in a second. We go back to Ronald's page. You'll see that DrawLoop actually automatically, we set this up to automatically post to uh, Ronald, the chatter feed tied to Ronald. Uh, so Bradley can actually see this already. He can log into his mobile device and he can actually get it. But again, I wanna make sure that he knows that I've just generated it for him. So I'm just gonna uh, mention him again. Oh, 
luck. And then we're going to post that. So that's just done with Rashida. So let's have a look at how this actually looks for Bradley. So Bradley, as we said, is an external wholesaler. He spends most of his time out in the field meeting financial advisors. As he's not at his desk very often, mobile access on his phone or iPad is critical. The Salesforce One app is great for Bradley because it lets him uh, see everything that Rashida can see, but in a mobile friendly way. So let's bring that up. So you remember that Rashida app mentioned Bradley a couple of times. And as I look at my phone, you'll see that I've got notifications on the home screen. So let's open one of these up. So that's opened Salesforce one straight up and it's brought me right to the post that Rashida made. I can see the tear sheet right here and I can even open it up to see the details. You'll see that even though this is a full page PDF, even just looking on my phone, this is actually pretty easy to see the details that I need to see. It's got details at the top that will help me get in the building. It's got a summary of sales and assets and the products that I can actually talk to uh, Ronald about. And it's got my last couple of meeting notes. Um, what's great about the, the Salesforce One app is I can actually go straight from here into the Ronald Kruger page. I can see all the information just on my app and it's obviously optimized for the, you know, for the mobile phone experience. Uh, so just before I want to go in, I just want to see if he's done any tickets recently, make sure I'm up to date on last trade. So I go to here, I scroll down to transactions. And here they are. I can, uh, I can see every ticket that he's done in the last and I can go back as far as I need, but I can actually, I can drill into the details if I wanted to. Um, and now I'm ready for my meeting. So the meeting goes well. Afterwards, I want to let Rashida know that she can quickly handle the follow-ups. As I'm walking to my car, I open up Salesforce One again to send her a message. And I don't even want to type. I want to just speak into my phone. So I go back to the chatter feed. I hit on the comment. I go to type something. And I hit the little microphone. Meeting went great, period. Can you please send Ronald the latest fact sheet? Okay, we got the name slightly off. So let's blame my accent for that. Um, that wraps up the retail business. We've shown you all the different parts of the uh, of the sales team can use Salesforce to make sure that they have the right data in front of them when they're working. We've delved a little bit into the sort of Einstein analytics dashboards. This is a topic we're going to get much deeper into in a future webinar, so stay tuned for that. Next, we're going to show you the institutional side of the business. As we pointed out before, we're doing this from the very same Salesforce instance because Salesforce allows us to have very different user experiences for different user profiles. If you're currently using separate systems for retail institutional, this is a huge opportunity to bring them together. Uh, and getting both sides of the business on a single platform can really pay off when you want to do things like implement a single marketing automation tool like Pardot. So now, institutional. For this part of the demo, we're actually going to start with the client's perspective. Victor is an institutional client, and he's going to log into a client portal that's built using Salesforce Community Cloud. And what's great about Community Cloud is that you, you don't need any additional infrastructure to set this up. You're just exposing, but in a really secure way, information that's already in Salesforce. So as Victor, I'm going to go to the login page of the Liquid Hub Asset Management client portal. Here we are. And I've typed these details in already, so I'm just going to click to log in. Once I'm logged in, my homepage shows me a snapshot of my assets with Liquid Hub, um, and it's got details of all my accounts. It also has tabs to let me quickly see performance reports, uh, requests that I've made, and the status of requests that I've made. It lets me manage my subscriptions to sort of marketing emails and marketing alerts, um, and it also you know, acts as a secure document fault. Um, today, I'm logging in because I, I have a new consultant on one of my accounts and I want to make sure he's getting performance reports for the account that he covers. Uh, before I do that though, I want to just take a quick look at one of my accounts. I was a little bit worried about the performance. So I click into the multi alts account just to see how it's doing. As you can see, year to date is a little bit less than the benchmark, but quarter to date, you know, it's really, we're, we're actually kicking it up a bit this year. So that's, I'm pretty happy about that. Next time I talk to Vanessa, who's my relationship manager, I'm going to, yeah, we're going to have a good conversation about that. But now that I've done that, 
I want to do what I came here for, which is to raise a request to have a new consultant added to my account. So I go to the request tab. Here I can see all my requests. Um, and I click on the new service request button to get the simple form. That's all it takes. And I put the relevant information in. Uh, so let's see, we're going to choose the type of change report recipients. We're going to say add Brian Chan to performance reports. I'm going to select which account this ties to. And of course, everything's high priority. I click submit. And as I submit this, the service request will get created in Salesforce and it'll get assigned to the relevant person at Liquid Hub Asset Management based on the type of request, who covers me, any other kind of rules, because this is very, very configurable. Under the covers, this is Salesforce's case management functionality, which has existed forever and is used by businesses across all industries to manage client service issues, including Salesforce themselves. So as Victor, I'll get an email confirming the details of the request and also automatic emails for any updates made. I can even respond to those emails and have the responses automatically added to the request. Uh, this is all I'm gonna show right now for Victor's experience, but look out for a future webinar where we get deeper on Community Cloud and how we can use it to build a fully fledged asset management client portal. So next up, we've got Vanessa. Vanessa is an institutional relationship manager here at Liquid Hub Asset Management. Uh, she covers uh, Victor and Victor's firm. Um, so I'm going to log in to yet another browser as Vanessa. Um, and here we can see, first thing I, I'd point out, this homepage looks completely different to what the homepages we saw for uh, Rashida and Kieran earlier. Uh, you know, she's in a different side of the business. This is the same exact instance of Salesforce, but everything looks completely different. So this is highly configurable and can be very different for different user groups. There are a lot of different ways that I can be notified that Victor raised his request. I will have received an email. Uh, the request will show up in the queue assigned to me in the service request tab up here. Um, and and th these tabs have a lot of new features. I really, you know, if you're new to Lightning Experience, really play around with this, this is really cool. But today I'm gonna show another new Lightning Experience feature, notifications. You see this number one up here by this bell icon? at the top right, this shows me my notifications. It's very similar to how it works in Salesforce One. So if you've been using Salesforce One for a while, you'll see that this is the same as the sort of stage right notification uh, alerts there. If I click on it, it'll show me all my notifications. And I can click right in here to the post that notified me and from there right through into the request itself. Looking at the request, I can see all the details I need. Um, the request, is linked directly to the account that, uh, that, that Victor is requesting a change on, so I can jump straight there. I'm now looking at the exact same account record that Victor was looking at when he was looking at it in the portal. But as you can see, I can see a lot more information about the account. Salesforce Community Cloud makes it really easy to restrict what the customer can see versus what's available internal, but you're still looking at the same fundamental data. To carry out Victor's request, all I have to do is add Brian Chan as a new interested party. Uh, we have Salesforce set up to synchronize these interested parties to our performance reporting system. So once I've done this here, there's nothing else needed other than let Victor know we've completed the request. So let's go through the process of adding Brian. So I search my contacts. Brian Chan at Towers Watson, that's the guy. Uh, and he should receive performance reports. I could give him access to this account on his login to the portal, uh, but I'm not going to do that right now because Victor didn't ask me to. That's something I'll, I'll note to kind of follow up with Victor when, we, uh, uh, when I speak to him next. So that's done. Um, I can see that he's listed now as an interested party. I can click back through to, uh, to Brian Chan to see some more information, which I'll do in a second. But the first things first, I want to go back to that service request and close it out. It's right here in my recent records. I want to just edit this, set it to close. This way, Victor's going to get his notification that I've closed it out. I would, in reality, put some details here in the description, but for now, I'm just going to hit save. As I'm closing the case, I want to just check up on Victor. Um, see what his sort of engagement level is. 
So I click through to Victor's contact record. That's another great thing in Salesforce. Everything is linked to everything, so you just click through from one place to the next. Um, if I click on this little marketing tab over here, what we're looking at is his engagement through Pardot. This is a Pardot widget here, um, and we're using it to do sort of email marketing, but also other sort of marketing automation, how he's downloading things from the website, event participation, things like that. Um, by clicking on this marketing tab, I can see all of this, uh, and I could even click through and go into um, Pardot if I wanted to. We're, we're Big fans of Pardot for the asset management industry is it really helps kind of get marketing and sales working together. Uh, and, and it works really well for both institutional and retail. So you get a bit of economy of scale there. And the integration at Salesforce is really flexible, but yet also pretty straightforward to, to set up. So thinking of email marketing, that just reminds me that, you know, we just added Brian Chan to get a performance report from uh, Victor's multi-alt account. That lets me know that Brian covers alternatives. Managing relationships for the consultants is just as important as our client relationships. So I want to make sure that Brian is receiving our alternative newsletter. So I go back to Brian's page. I'll just do that from again through the recent items. It's not showing there, so let me we'll go back and just search for Brian. I click on his marketing. First thing I notice, we're getting a hard bounce from his email. And as you can see, that's not a real email address. Um, so take a note there that we need to fix uh, Brian's email address. I will give him a phone and we, a phone and we will sort that out. Um, obviously, he's not going to be receiving the performance reports until we sort that out. Um, next, I want to just make sure he's getting, I see he's not getting our alternatives newsletter. So I'm just going to. Oh, just going to click here add them to there, click save, and we're done. That completes what we're actually going to show today. That showed you how easy it was to kind of add someone to a mailing list in Pardot. Um, so what do we see? We've only really scratched the surface of the features available in the accelerator, but we have shown you that institutional and retail can live together with specific experiences optimized for the different needs of each channel. For those of you who've been on sales for some time, we've shown you some of the features that come along with lightning experience. We've shown you how powerful and flexible Einstein analytics dashboards can be. We've shown you how easy it is to integrate Pardot for marketing automation. And we've shown you how you can use Salesforce Community Cloud to build a client-facing secure portal. We'll be running these webinars on a quarterly or more frequent basis going forward, and we'll be diving much deeper into all of these topics. So we'll have some specific webinars on, on each of the above. So stay tuned for details. Now, we have some time to address any questions that might have come in. So I'm going to hand over to Brennan and see if anything has come in while we've been talking. Yeah, thanks, Kenny. Uh, we did have a few come through. I do want to remind people, uh, if you do have questions you haven't yet uh, posted, uh, please feel free to use the questions. Uh, uh, panel within the uh, GoToMeeting uh, console, uh, but we have a few already. We'll, we'll try to get through as best as we can. Uh, so first off, Kenny, is there a license cost to customers for this functionality? No, there's no no license cost on top of, you know, obviously you need to be a Salesforce customer. Um, what you pay to LiquidUp is pure sort of customization and integration services as we set it up for you. Um, there's no license cost whatsoever. Uh, we do it as work for hire. Okay, great. Uh, and uh, let's see, uh, can we add features to an existing org? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, if you're an existing Salesforce customer and you've built stuff out, you know, we typically, we'd have a look at what you have, see the differences, work with you on understanding which pieces there are, make sense for you. And we work, that's something we've done quite a lot. So yeah, so this does not, doesn't have to be a sort of green field or blue sky to mix metaphors uh, answer. Okay, uh, here's one that's just come through. Uh, are, are you deploying customers already via Lightning and do you see any challenges with that? Uh, so yes, absolutely. Um, we have both, you know, most of our new implementations are with Lightning um, and we have also kind of taken quite a lot of our, you know, longer term, you know, deployments, people who were initially deployed before Lightning and moving them over to Lightning. Um, there are a lot of advantages that have 
called out on Lightning, there were in the early days of Lightning some considerations. I would say that especially by the summer release and the new winter release coming soon, most of those are a thing of the past. So there are definitely some challenges. You need to plan it out properly. Not everything goes across, you know, without any thought, particularly if you're using third-party add-ins. Uh, but by and large, we're seeing this as the future, and uh, we're recommending people make the move. Okay. Uh, do you have to use all of the features? What if we don't want to use Einstein? Yeah, absolutely. So you do not have to use all of the features. It's designed modular, modularly. So even if you're just a pure institutional business or pure retailer or pure hedge fund, you can use just the modules that you want. And that includes, you know, the sort of things I've shown today, like the, the community cloud, the Einstein analytics, the, uh, the Pardot. The, we do think they're all really good and we'd have those conversations, but absolutely not a requirement to, to do every single piece. Okay, this one's a little bit similar, but uh, if we are already using Salesforce, can you help us upgrade to Lightning and add an investor portal? Yeah, I mean, absolutely is the, the answer to that. I think, you know, we've shown you kind of how the portal could look. Uh, usually we work with you, especially client-facing stuff. You want to make sure you get that right. Um, but absolutely, we've done Lightning uh, upgrades um, for some of our long-term clients, and uh, we'd be happy to, to talk about something like, please reach out. We'll, we'll talk about how to get in touch at the end, and please reach out, and we, we'd love to discuss that. Okay. Uh, do you integrate with sales data providers? Uh, yes, so we've, you know, on the retail side, that's a critically important piece, obviously. We've integrated with all of the, the major sales data providers, um, and there's, some of those guys have pre-built plugins. Sometimes you need to go above and beyond there. We, we, we have a really good relationship with the sales data providers. It, it's uh, really, it, it comes down to having a discussion about what you need to get out of that data and what's the best approach for it. Again, we'd be happy to discuss that. Okay, uh, a couple questions around Salesforce Classic. I'll try to combine them. Uh, does this work with Salesforce Classic and are there any feature constraints, uh, especially Einstein? Uh, so it does work with Salesforce Classic. We have been, we have many, many happy asset management customers who've been deployed on Classic before Lightning using this sort of accelerator. Um, there's nothing in what we have customized that is super specific to Lightning. That may change over the years as we do more custom development within here. So we can definitely make this work um, with Classic. There are a few things that are just available in this in Lightning experience generally that you won't be able to take advantage of. Uh, so things like I didn't really get into Einstein as a whole. Einstein is the new um, sort of artificial intelligence framework that Salesforce has. Uh, that's going to be a Lightning only thing. Uh, there are certain other features of Lightning Experience I showed you. There's nice features like Sales Path that I didn't even show you today, but that's actually kind of nice when you're looking at um, pipeline uh, that that you don't get on Classic, but but nothing that's really intrinsic to our asset management framework is doesn't work in Classic. So Classic is is good. Okay. Um... Does this work with Financial Services Cloud, FSC? So yes, yes, and we, we've done that. It's, uh, it works really well with FSC, and we can adjust it to work with the FSC model. Um, but it's not a requirement that you have FSC or Financial Services Cloud for it to work. So uh, it's one of these things where, again, we'd be happy to kind of sit down with you and understand your situation to better understand what, what the best sort of uh, fit there is. Okay. Uh, are there features for compliance or suitability? Yeah, that's becoming a more and more important thing, and we're seeing a lot of it, uh, particularly in Europe, but uh, but but globally, that's important. So we do. That's again something that uh, we could set up. We might do a future webinar in, but in in in, in lieu of that, you know, get in touch and we can uh, we can show you some of that stuff. Okay, compliance must be in the mind. Uh, does this work with Shield or platform encryption? So absolutely. Um, it works just the same way that any sort of Salesforce implementation would work with Shield. There's nothing that we've done that would uh, not work with Shield. We, uh, we do, we need to sit through and think about some of the implications of working with Shield and plan it properly. But obviously, information security and privacy are top of mind these days and very, very important in this industry generally. Um, so, so absolutely. 
Okay, this is a long one. Hold on for this. Uh, we have both retail and institutional sales teams on two different CRMs. Are you able to help clean up clients so we can create a shared client profile? Yes, that's a great question because that is something that's not that easy to do, but that is something we have done quite a lot of. We've done a lot of implementations where firms have just lived in those silos and then when it comes to bring it together, you're like, oh, we that 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 you know big financial institute exists institution exists in both uh, in, in both channels. So yeah, we've done a lot of work on figuring out the data hierarchies, the, the sort of data governance approach for for bringing those two things together. Let's just uh, talk about your own needs, and we can uh, see what that might mean. Uh, does this solution work for private equity? Uh, it does. Um, so. It does with, we have a sort of bolt on to make it work with private equity. If you're, so what we showed today was more on the institutional side was more the traditional separately managed account kind of business. If you have private funds or a blend of separate accounts and private funds, there might be some changes we make uh, to make it work. And with private equity, we have some sort of add-ons that we do. So some of the changes are pretty trivial, like changing the terminology. You know, if you're a pure uh, private fund business, you might talk about things like investor relations and investor servicing, uh, rather than the sort of terminology we showed you there for a traditional asset manager. Uh, but with private equity in particular, uh, we would add on some sort of structure to help you deal with things like capital calls, etc. Um, you know, again, get in touch and uh, we, we can show you some of that stuff. We'll probably okay. also do that in a webinar in the, the future. There's enough okay. unique stuff about private equity. Okay, uh, and how much does the implementation cost and how long does it take? Uh, well, great questions. Uh, all implementations are really different and, and the cost can really vary a lot. I mean, what, what drives the cost is the complexity of your situation, the number of integrations. You know, we, it, there's a, just a lot of variables go into it. So what we like to do is just have a one-on-one -on -one discussion at first so we can kind of better estimate for your situation. Okay, uh, I think uh, we're winding down. I'll give it another minute. Anybody have any additional questions they'd like to get into the uh, into the pool here? Okay, um, great. Well, uh, I'd like to again thank everybody for joining the webinar today. Uh, hopefully, you found it valuable. Uh, we will be sending out an email with a link to the recording of the webinar shortly. Uh, if you have any questions or feedback, uh, obviously, please feel free to reach out to Kenny or me directly at the emails you see uh, on the screen in front of you, or obviously, as well, respond to the email that we'll send with the link to the recording. Uh, as Kenny mentioned, uh, we will be hosting future webinars uh, where we will be going very deep into uh, more of the features uh, that we showed you today, uh, some of the features that we didn't have a chance to show you today, uh, some of the, the workflow and processes around things like client onboarding, et cetera, uh, but uh, specialty uh, topics in communities or Einstein Cloud as well, too. Uh, so we hope you can join us for those in the future, uh, and uh, we again thank you for your time and uh, hope you all have a great day. Yep, thank you.